Salutations. Roe versus Wade was officially overturned, creating a sharp ideological divide within the left and the right. The right is cheering this decision as it marks what they view as an end to infanticide and instills their religious views into our public policy. On the flip side, the left is furious about the decision as they view such as an abridgment of a woman's right to choose and to have a say relative to her reproductive health absent of government interference. The two sides of the question fuel the polarity of an artificially designed culture war that the ruling class wishes to convert into a civil war as a means to coax our citizenry into a murderous outrage as socioeconomic conditions continue to deteriorate. For more than half a century, people have been fighting over the abortion question with an either all or none approach and it is very obnoxious on both ends. The Christian Zionist neocons do not want to yield one inch, one inch, relative to compromise. They believe that their religious beliefs override the laws of our republic, but have no respect whatsoever for the fact that our republic was not founded as a Judeo-Christian institution, contrary to what their revisionist echo chamber of Christian Zionist propaganda tells them. But our republic was founded by deists and Freemasons who did not want the Protestant Anglican Church or the Vatican to be making laws from the pulpit. The vast majority of the people of this republic do not believe that, the le that life begins at conception. Life begins with a beating heart. What more, the Christian Zionist neocons do not want to engage in any form of contributing to an economic program that will help financially embattled families and single parents to help raise a child in a world that's becoming more and more expensive due to no government intervention to impose price controls on the anarchy of the free market. They will come up with automatic half-assed responses relative to suggesting adoption, when adoption is not always a universal solution as it relates to childcare. Most people do not want to surrender their offspring over to the state so the state can assign a child to a foster family that may provide a worse situation than that of which the child was originally in. If Christian Zionist neocons are so hell-bent on protecting the sanctity of life, then the churches need to have 75% of their revenue taxed by the state. This will create a fund to help struggling families and single mothers who were perhaps involuntarily impregnated or brought about a child via a toxic relationship if they want to force their religious doctrines on a secular republic founded on Greco-Roman Democratic Republican Enlightenment principles. Then the churches need to be taxed if they want to influence our laws. On the flip side, let's talk about the evangelical left. A woman does have a right to make a decision over her own health care. However, up to a certain time, the practice of abortion does become unethical, and liberals must do well to understand that not everybody views abortion as an ethical practice. The pro-life folks have a point that a fetus does feel pain and is a living sentient being, being destroyed when it's ripped from the womb. Abortions in the third trimester is infanticide. Straight up, it's infanticide. Abortions in the first trimester is a medical procedure to remove an unwanted pregnancy, especially in the event of a rape. With that stated, how liberals are acting, rioting in the streets of blue states where abortion is always going to be fully legal, is out of line and displays the rule of corrupt non-government organizations like Planned Parenthood and not the rule of law. The rational position thus forth is to have a constitutional amendment that restricts abortion beyond the first trimester unless under very special circumstances where the procedure should be used relative to quality of life questions as it pertains to the long-term health of the mother and or of the fetus. In addition to such a legal measure, it should also come with legal entitlement for single parents to receive pecuniary assistance from the state to help upbring a child until the child reaches four years of age. 
yet the Christian Zionists are still unwilling to yield on such a halfway proposal. They are allowing the Vatican and the Anglican Protestant Church to dictate our laws, which is incongruent with the vision of our founders. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Right behind me is Federal Hall, where the Bill of Rights was discussed and passed, who wanted neither to make laws for the United States. The liberals on the flip side aren't willing to meet halfway on this either because they want abortion on demand and without apology because that helps Planned Parenthood make more money. So what is the extreme centrist position on this question? Quarantine. At this point, it's the only answer to this question. Quarantine. People on the right who don't want to meet halfway with the people on the left and people on the left who don't want to meet halfway with the right should very well be quarantined until both sides are willing to come halfway on a solution that satisfies both parties relative to a secular answer that is applicable to both sides without yielding to religious superstitions and without yielding to hedonism. The rational people in the center who are center left and center right and who are sick of the far left and the far right ripping this country in half should make a compromise solution that both allows for a woman the right to choose while preventing infanticide from occurring. At the same time, Planned Parenthood does need to be shut down. They are a corrupt, money-making, grifting operation that profits from manufactured outrage and crisis. Family planning services should be publicly owned and state run. If the Christian Zionist fundamentalists don't like that, then they are free to leave the United States because this country is not a Christian theocracy. And if the hedonistic liberals don't like the fact then that this is an, an anarchist paradise of lawlessness and where they can do whatever they please if it makes them feel good, they are free to leave as well. This abortion debate has been going on for over 50 years, and it detracts from uh, directly addressing our structural problems as relative to the neoliberal economic system that we live under. The cost of living is skyrocketing due to overinflation of real estate, and what Christian fundamentalists fail to understand, that if economic needs and economic security were to be met, there would be dramatically less abortions as parents could afford to raise children. You can't just outlaw abortion and leave it up to God. God only helps those who help themselves, as Ben Franklin once said. And who are the Christian fundamentalists helping if they aren't willing to help themselves and others? They are helping the very devil they're supposed to fight because economic austerity is the work of the devil. Abortion is not okay, but if a baby starves to death thanks to free market austerity economics, it's God's will. As mentioned before, if the religious right wants the pulpit to dictate laws in our republic, which was founded on Greco-Roman enlightenment principles, then they should be willing to have both the Catholic and Protestant Church bear the full cost and responsibility of influencing our policy decisions and take part with ensuring the economic security of our children and their needs are met. If they don't want to pay taxes, then the military, the National Guard, state police should be dispatched to shut down every church connected to either directly or indirectly to the Vatican and the Anglican Communion and be seized by the state as our founders wanted a country where laws were not to be influenced by either the Protestant Church or, or of Canterbury and the Catholic Church of Rome. If the American Baptist Church, which fetishizes the Old Testament, has a problem with paying taxes, then the military should shut down every American Baptist Church and deport every Christian evangelist to Israel since they love Israel so much and let the religious theocracy of Israel dictate our American laws. This abortion debate makes our corrupted republic look like an utter embarrassment to the rest of the world, which has reasonable abortion laws that are both ethical and secular. The far left and the far right do a great embarrassment to our people, our history, our tradition of historical progress. Their collective anti-government rhetoric 
is fueling a civil war that will rip this republic in half. And at this time, it's not a question of left versus right. It's a question of preserving the union at all costs. We must do better, and we can do better. But the answer will not come from the hedonistic far-left anarchists, not the religious far-right fascists, but the common sense center. That is all I have to say. God save our American state. This is Comrade Pella signing out.